All right, witches and wizards, welcome back to another You Buy Projects. I'm Psycho again with you today, and in this one, we are going to be covering the fourth part of the Harry Potter, well, game installments. Uh, the fourth part in the series, as well as the fourth part in the um, in the game series. Um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Released back in 2005, uh, the game is an action-adventure video game published by Electronic Arts. Um, and it is based, who would have guessed, on the movie with the same name. Um, the game itself was released for a lot of platforms actually. Game Boy Advance, GameCube, um, Microsoft Windows, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 2, Xbox and PlayStation Portable. Um, the reviews that kind of got to it um, when it was released were mixed. Um, some of them were enjoying the spells and the scope of the game, but others were being less impressed by the short length and the, um, how shall we call it, the style of the game that they actually changed throughout it, um, from the third to the fourth part. Just because um, in the first uh, three installments you had a much, how should we call it, much more of an open world type of game. Which gave you the ability to explore, do stuff, um, make it. It was actually a third person game um, that was super enjoyable. Um, with this part, they made it from a bird's eye view where you can play three characters um, and you have stages, not so much as an open world. I was kind of disappointed by that um, when the game, when I actually played the game at first. Um, but after a while, you kind of get used to it, and the game gets, like, super fun. Um, it becomes super fun to play, even with the lack of the other components that were present in the first three parts. Um, it is still a great game to play, especially if you are a Potter fan. Um, and it, the story itself, as I said, follows the typical... Um, the typical storyline of the book and the whole series, but kind of gives you some other, um, how should we call it, um, some other abilities and things to explore throughout the world. Um, you can actually choose as which character to play, and you will get the, um, what are the, I think there were beans, to pretty much unlock upgrades and make your characters more power powerful, get them to sling more spells, sling them faster, and pretty much do stuff um, to unlock new areas throughout the game. You can revisit past areas that you were in um, after you learn new spells to pretty much unlock stuff and get the collectibles. But, um, as I said, the lack of the free roaming component is there. So, it's pretty much a thing that was that the Harry Potter games were known for um, throughout the first three installments. But, as far as I know, in the next, how should we call it, couple of years, um, a new game is about to be released, which will be an open world Harry Potter world um, and I'm super excited for it, actually. It's, it might be super amazing when it comes out, but we'll see how everything goes when, um, when it comes out. If they're gonna upgrade on these, or are they gonna kind of go for a new type of playstyle and everything. So, I'm gonna recommend this game to all of you, how should we call it, Wizarding World fans, um, Harry Potter fans, and, I don't know, people that pretty much... It's a kind of kind of a specific game, more to like Potter fans and everything, and less to like a general public. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna recommend you this game to all of you Potter fans. In the meantime, um, and yeah, that's pretty much gonna be all from my side. Um, you guys, in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment on the videos, and join me in the next one.